Hello, everybody. Rob Mize with you once again, and today I would like to share with you some techniques for creating a real 3D cube using only your basic After Effects tools. Part of the challenge in producing a cube is achieving the precise positioning of its six sides, but some simple arithmetic and the capabilities of After Effects will help us meet this challenge. So, if you're ready to build a basic 3D object in 3D space, then let's get started. Click on the new comp button, and here I'm offered a 1280 by 720 comp, which is what I want, and I'll name this cube. I'll create the first side for my cube with a new solid, and rather than make it comp size, let's make it 400 by 400 pixels, which gives me a perfect square and looks to be sized about right for this composition. Duplicate this layer with Command D, one, two, three, four, five times for a total of six sides. Make these layers 3D, and let's use our custom cam view to show us that in the 3D universe, we can choose to defy the laws of physics and allow all six of our solids to occupy the same space at the same time. But from this position, we'll simply rotate the other sides into their positions on the cube. First, I'll label this layer back and the remaining layers bottom, left, right, top, and front. This order doesn't matter, but it makes sense to me and helps me keep it straight. Let's create a new light to cast some shadows and give some texture to our cube and help define it and see the positioning of the sides a bit better. Spotlight is fine, and let's put cast shadows on. I'll use the back layer in its current place as the reference or starting point for our cube. Select the bottom layer. You don't have to reveal these parameters, but in order to see what's going on, hit A to reveal your anchor position and use Shift R to see the orientation rotation parameters. The Y key selects the anchor tool. Click the anchor point and hold down Shift to drag straight down. Also hold Command or Control on a PC and the anchor point will snap into position at the bottom edge of the solid. If we look at the anchor point Y parameter, that's been changed to 400, the height of the solid we created. This tells us we have the anchor point in the position where we want it. Now, if you scrub this value or type it in, the position of the solid itself changes, and we don't want that. So, to the best of my knowledge, you have to use this anchor tool, also known as the pan behind tool, which makes sense when using this technique. Now, use the W key to select the rotate tool. On the x-axis, rotate this bottom side down, holding down shift as you do so, and it will snap into place at 90 degrees. You could just adjust the orient x-axis to 90 degrees, but we'll use the rotate tool. Notice that the rotation occurs at the anchor point, so the bottom side winds up exactly positioned at a 90 degree angle at the bottom of the back side. Now let's select the left side, hit A and Shift R to reveal anchor point and rotation parameters. Y selects the anchor tool, Shift Command drag the anchor point to the left edge of the solid and snap it into the anchor point X position at zero. Makes sense. The left edge of a 400 by 400 square would be zero. W selects the rotate tool, this time on the Y axis, shift drag to rotate and snap this side into position at 90 degrees on the Y axis. But notice these changes occur in the orientation parameters rather than the rotate parameters. And although they appear to create a similar motion, there's a significant difference in how they animate. 
I might use orientation to position an object before using rotation to spin it. So let's position the right side now. Y selects the anchor point. Shift, Command, Drag to the right edge of this uh, solid. Um, anchor point X position should read 400. Hit W and Shift Rotate right into the 270 or minus 90 degree position. Let's grab the top side, hit Y, shift drag the anchor point to the top edge, hold down command to snap it into place, hit W and shift rotate up to snap to the 270 degree mark. For the front, we want to bring it forward into position, so here I will scrub the Z position control to bring the front into position at 400 on the Z axis. If we go to our custom camera view, we can see there is our cube. Good enough, but let's animate our cube so that the sides move as a single object. And we could parent the other five layers to the front. And when the front moves, the cube moves as a single object. While I have the other sides parented to the front side, I'll adjust the front anchor point backward in Z space to a value of 200. This moves the entire cube backward into position with the anchor point at its center. And for me, this results in a more predictable movement of the cube. But you may decide to create a null object, make it 3D, and now parent all the layers to the null. This way, we can animate each layer individually and use the null when we want to animate the layers together as a group, as a cube. Now, all this is good and fine, but let's exploit the potential of this composition to serve as a template to quickly customize our 3D cube. Let's select this front layer, Command-Shift-C, Select Leave All Attributes in Cube and OK. Now let's open that pre-comp and we'll see our 2D solid in a composition sized exactly for it, 400 by 400 pixels. I'll select this metal image from the good folks at cgtextures.com and drag this into my comp and I'll make sure that it's scaled to completely fit my comp so that I don't have any gaps in that side. And back in our cube comp, there's our metal texture on the front. We'll pre-comp the other five layers and add the footage or image we want to each pre-comp. We'll scale it, position it, add whatever effects we want, and when we go back to our cube comp, there they are. This is a much easier way to go than trying to scale different size images and reposition anchor points and layers and add mask, etc. This way, you just drop it into that pre-sized pre-comp and it's going to fit on the uh, side of your cube. So there are six pre-comped sides. Let's add a text layer. I'll type in 3D cube and position it over the front of our cube. We'll make that layer 3D. Let's bring it forward in Z space so it is actually in front of the front. And we'll parent it to the null so everything continues to move together as one object. So let's add a background. Let's create a new solid, make it 3D, and look at our custom camera setting and we can see our background is intersecting with our cube. So let's move it back in Z space until it no longer interferes with the cube. I find using these other camera views a big help when constructing and moving objects in 3D space. And I can use the escape key to get back to our active camera view. This is a great shortcut. The escape key toggles between your current camera view and the last camera view that you used. 
Select all our layers, hit AA, and make sure Cast Shadows is on. Accept Lights on. Accept Shadows can be off in this case. Except for the front and background layers where we do want some shadows to fall. So for those two layers, we'll set Accept Shadows to on. On the background, turn off Cast Shadows. My thinking is, if you don't need it, turn it off and save yourself some render time. You can adjust these material options so that as your cube rotates, it picks up some surface reflection from the light and really emphasizes the motion. So play with these settings some to get the look that you like. Now, if you want to tidy up a bit, let's select the sides and the text layer and with Command-Shift-C, pre-comp them into a single layer. I'll call this PC Cube and we'll move all the attributes into the new composition. Now we have our pre-comps into a single layer. Let's make it 3D. Hit W to use the Rotate tool to rotate the cube and we can see that our cube has gone flat. Select the Collapse Transformation button and that's the one I'm looking for. You can control the cube as a single object now. No null required. If you hit AA, you'll see that you have no material options when the collapse transformation is used. To set those options, go back into the pre-comp layers inside the PC cube pre-comp. Now, these shadows can leave something to be desired. I found that as I increased the shadow diffusion, I began to get these artifacts. And I could minimize the problem with careful adjustment of the lights, but I kept getting these spikes. And I tried a number of approaches, including rendering a shadow pass. However, I think I discovered a better and rather simple and elegant solution. In your cube comp, Change the shadow diffusion for any lights casting shadows to zero. No diffusion, no artifacts. Open a new comp viewer and drag it to the side. And lock the viewers to the cube and pre-comp cube comps so that you have these views regardless of the active comp in your timeline. Back in the PC cube, the cube pre-comp, select all the elements of the cube, hit AA, and turn Cast Shadows off. Duplicate all these layers and drag the duplicates to the bottom of your stack. I'll change the layer color to these to none, basically a dark gray, like a shadow. I'll hit AA and change Cast Shadows to Only. Create a new adjustment layer and add a fast blur. Now adjust the blur to your liking, and you'll see the result over in your cube composition. So now you have a soft shadow that matches the motion of your cube and responds to the position of the light. So there you have your three-dimensional, quickly customizable cube. I hope you found this useful, not only in making cubes, but also in understanding objects in 3D space and in finding ways to streamline your workflow and make your time more productive. It's always good to hear from you and see the projects you're working on. So until next time, this is Rob Mize wishing you happy compositing.